welcome. We are Kitchen Garden Farm. We're a 65 acre organic diversified vegetable farm. Uh, we do all of our sales wholesale, so no CSA, no farmer's markets. Um, and we grow a really wide array of crops, probably like at least 50 different things. Um, and then within those, we have, you know, a hundred varieties of peppers. So lots and lots of diversity. Um, the farm started out in 2006 on a single acre of rented land in Hadley. It moved here to this location the following year with just half of this piece of land behind us that we own now. So it was just six acres that year and then it's steadily grown every, almost every year since then. We stopped growing probably in 2018 or something in terms of acreage. Um, so now we're at 65 acres. We own 30 of those. We lease the other 35 from lots of local people. Um, and we are about half here in Sunderland and half across the river in Waitley. Lots of disparate pieces, as I'm sure you all know that that's the world of farming in Western Mass. Lots of patchwork. Um, almost all of the land that we farm is APR land. Some of that we bought already in APR. A couple of pieces we bought at the commercial rate and we converted them to APR. Um, so all of your organizations have been immensely helpful in making this farm uh, exist. We exist because of FSA loans and MDAR and lots of grants from MDAR and, and, um, and the APR on all of our land and all of that. Um, and we also, in addition to growing a really wide diversity of crops, we make value added products. We have a commercial kitchen here where we produce salsa, sriracha, jardinera, which is a mixed vegetable pickle. We also make dried peppers and a few other smaller batch items. Um, and we'll take a look at the kitchen. We won't Best go sriracha. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and that's about, at this point, that's 60% of the revenue that we make here is uh, from our value added, 40% fresh vegetable sales, but value added, and we make all of our value added stuff with produce that we grow here on the farm, probably takes up like maybe 10% of the cropland that we grow, would you say, Max? Uh, more than that, probably. More than that? 20. 20, okay. So 20% of the the cropland that we grow and 60% of our revenue is that value added stuff. Um, and what else do we have to say about this? We can give a little bio of ourselves. Uh, again, I'm Lily. Um, I grew up in New York City, but I moved to Massachusetts to go to college. And Max and I were in the sustainable food and farming program at UMass together. We did the student farm together in 2013. Uh, which is a year-long class where students plan a farm season in the spring, work on the farm in the summer, and then harvest, run a CSA, sell to wholesale places in the fall. So definitely learned a lot about what we do here through doing that program. Um, and do you want to give a little bio of yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to apologize here. I, I'm going to let Lily do most of the talking because I kind of lost my voice. You can kind of hear a couple days ago. So. <laughs> Sorry about that, the timing couldn't be worse for that. But yeah, I um, I started working here in 2014 after getting out of the Sustainable Food and Farming Program that I was in with Lily. Um, and I was living in the neighborhood. Uh, this was just uh, the closest farm to where I, I uh, like was living in, in while I was going to school. And um, my roommate at the time was running through around the neighborhood and was like, oh, hey, there's this really cool farm down the street. You should like, you should apply there, you know, kitchen garden. Um, and like, who knew that that would, you know, set a course for like the next 10 years of my life. Um, I just started, I started here working on the harvest team. It was a very small farm at that time. There was like, so in 2014, we were still at like a 10 person staff and maybe only 15 acres. Um, and I just, this, we, grew really quickly you know I, I started taking over a whole branch of running the production team in 2016 um, and then we were just growing growing until like Lily said like 2018 we were kind of capped in terms of land area but then we kept growing our kitchen operation to where it's at today and, and 
this has been a huge step this year for us to take over and learn about the business side of, of things because we've been so and intimately involved in the day-to-day -day operations for uh, so long. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so uh, Max started here in 2014, I started here in 2016, um, and I was drawn into the farm because of Max's Instagram. Um, <laughs> because as a farm, we eat lunch together every day. That's a big part of um, our farm culture, is that we wanna eat the food that we grow here, and we wanna have meal time together and have that community time. So someone on the farm cooks lunch every day using produce from the farm. And I would see Max's pictures on his Instagram of the farm lunches. And I was like, well, I want to work on this farm. <laughs> um, so I started here in 2016. I also started on the harvest crew. That's where a lot of people start on the farm. And then I became the sales manager and I've had that role since 2018. Um, and so for many years, Max was running the production side of the farm, which is our greenhouses, our tractor work, uh, irrigation, everything that gets the crop ready to be harvested. And then I was running from harvest to out the door. So our harvest team, our washroom team, and sales. Um, and so we were kind of the perfect pair to take over the farm. Um, Max having been here 10 years, <coughs> me eight years. Um, and the original owners, Tim and Caroline, who had owned the farm for 18 years, um, were starting to feel a little burnt out on the farm life. They wanted to spend a lot more time with their family. They have two teenage kids. Um, and they were just really looking for, um, farm transitions are really hard. It's hard to find the right people to uh, give your farm to. And they were like, we have, in addition to my, Max and myself, a staff that's really knowledgeable, that really cares about the farm. This seems like the right moment to hand it over to someone else. Um, so that we can know that it will continue. Uh, and so they approached Max and myself and offered us this sale um, that we spent about, that was August of last year. So it's, it's basically exactly it's, it's like one year yeah. <laughs> from when they first offered that to us. We started going through the process of getting the loans together in about November of last year. And then the farm sale went through um, on May 31st. So we've officially been the owners for three months. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, that, it, and to be honest, that was probably the hardest process I've ever been through. Like the, <laughs> the, the six month transmission process. And we're still learning a lot, but it all, it was, it, 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 I mean, I, it wasn't rocky, but we just had to go jump through a lot of hoops and, and learn very quickly how to uh, get that, get the loan required, get everyone on board with uh, the deal. So it was uh, probably a huge accomplishment. Yeah. yeah. Did you have a question for me? Yeah, I'm kind of curious how many staff do you have because I missed that now. Yeah, we have 25 staff now, and that's about um, seven in our kitchen, seven ish on the production team, and then like 11, 12 ish on our harvest and washroom team. We're working on it. Like, there, there are people that we, we, we kind of put in those roles, but are they ready to step up to the place that we were at? We're, we're still we're still getting there. Not but we have really there. great we have really really great, yeah, we people. great people. We have people who've been here for a number of years. Yeah. We have someone who's taken over a lot of Max's day to day on the production team. Um, we have two kitchen managers who have been here for years, and then we have management staff in the washroom and harvest team who are great. Uh, I'm still doing the sales role that I was doing before, and Max is still doing a lot of the hands-on production as well as production planning and kitchen planning. Um, fixing all the broken stuff. <laughs> I, I, I can't, <laughs> that's been my job here for like five to six years, and it, it's a never-ending thing. All farmers know, know that. <laughs> you just always have things you have to fix. And how are sales going? I mean, Sales they, are going well, yeah. I, I, see, I see a product sometimes in stores that are like are I don't know, I'm surprised to see it. It's outside of this area. Yeah, definitely. Our value added stuff is in all 50 states. Yeah, okay. um, and that is through a combination of distributors. We have a major distributor in this area that uh, brings our stuff to all of the North Atlantic and New England Whole Foods. 
So we're in that whole Whole Foods right, yeah. region. Yeah, right. So anywhere you go, you know, up to Maine and down to New Jersey, we're going to be in Whole Foods. Um, and then we're also in the Northern California Whole Foods region. Uh, and we sell to lots and lots of like small stores in all 50 states. Um, a lot through online wholesale marketplaces where they're kind of like Amazon for stores where people can order cases of, you know, nice, uh, you know, small batch products for little stores. Yeah. yeah. So we're all over. Yeah. I'm just uh, curious what was the mix of sort of advisors, financiers, Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great yeah. question. So we, the funding we did was a, a huge effort and a big mishmash and um, and I know that something I was told that you would want to know, Congressman McGovern, was like what the, what the government can do to help us as a farm. And one of those things is to increase the cap on FSA lending <laughs> because FSA, uh, their cap on um, land, lending for uh, land purchases is 600,000. Uh, and the deal that we did on this was 2.2 million. So that was a tiny fraction. Um, we also used 337,000 in what FSA called operating loans, but what we would call like equipment loans, because we have separately an operating loan that helps us do our annual operations. Um, so altogether, we did uh, 937,000 in FSA loans. And then we did 600,000 from Farm Credit East, and that's just at like a normal commercial lending rate. So that was this yeah. moment in time to buy a farm was really tough because that was 9.25%. So, uh, yeah. Oh. So the fact that that could be balanced by the FSA <laughs> loans was really, really important. And you know, the more FSA loans available to farmers, the more it's possible to do something like this. Um, we also got a loan from uh, the LADA Foundation at UMass, which is a $100,000 interest-free loan for UMass grads doing agricultural work. And that is such an amazing program and more people should know about it. Um, it can be used for equipment or land or whatever. It's any UMass grad too. Yeah, it doesn't have to be an ag grad, grad, but they have yeah. to be doing an ag project. Um, and then we're also getting funding from the Carrot Project. They're doing, um, they usually do smaller loans, but they're doing a sort of pilot project um, giving us a larger loan, uh, part of which is to sort of um, show a model to FSA of the fact that larger subsidized loans uh, will really help. I think that was cool, did you? Bar <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> So um, all of those, we also got um, a grant that I think was combined from CESA and maybe Carrot Project to fund um, advising for our farm transition. And those advisors came from the um, non-lending arm of Farm Credit East. Uh, so that was really helpful for us in putting together all the numbers that we needed and figuring out who, who we were going to use to make up our loan package. Um, and yeah, just people at all the organizations really helped us out. Um, so that was, it was a huge team effort and lots of different players at the table. To raise the cap, does that have to be a, a legislative fix? Or, sorry, okay, so. I guess it's back to you. Last year, I feel like you were like, Natalie, here you go. Yeah, this yeah. year, I'm like, yeah, no, I, 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 well, we, the, the current farm bill is awful, uh, and so hopefully that'll die. Um, and then, you know, next year hopefully we'll, we'll have a chance uh, to, you know, to redo it, and maybe we could look at it that then. Yeah, that would be yeah. amazing. I mean, yeah. I mean, land's not getting any cheaper. No, I know, like and, and, and we and we and and there are a lot of younger farmers that want to get into this, but who has two million dollars, right? I mean. Yeah. And that's where sort of coming from, like, we, we, have, we were working here in all the years leading up to this transition, right. so Obviously we didn't, we didn't have, have like, a, a huge lot of bank of money, yeah, so <laughs> to be able to hand it off to people who want to do this work is kind of crucial. Um, right. We, um, the, the reason that this deal was able to happen was because of those FSA subsidized loans and because the previous owners of the farm really, really wanted it to happen and were willing to do a really 
amazingly generous thing and um, make the sale price 80% of the appraised value of the farm so that we didn't have to pay a down payment. The equity that was needed by FSA and Farm Credit and LADA for these pieces was covered by that discounted sale price. Um, and so, you know, usually it's really, really hard to transition land to people who uh, want to farm, have been farming, don't come from money, you know, who can buy a $2.2 million farm and put down a, what is that, $440,000 down payment? Definitely not us, not people who have been right. farming for many years, um, only like a large, only someone with a lot of money or some sort of um, organization. But um, we didn't have that and, and this was able to happen because of this really big discount. Um, yeah, shout out to Tim and Caroline. Yeah, they also yeah. they also built up a very successful business, and I think that's why it was possible. Basically. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They were able to leverage lots and lots of grants and other opportunities to make this farm a really uh, valuable place monetarily and in the community, and that made it so that selling it to us, even at that twenty percent discount, they got enough money on the sale that they're able to you know go on and. Um, be taking a little bit of time off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions at this moment? So if the kitchen you know, the value added, the percent of your income comes from that, that's year round. Yes. So how, how many Roughly. people full time are you able to, uh, you know, to get to year round? We keep on about. 12 to 15 staff year round. It's less than full time in the winter for almost everyone. In the summer, it's a little more than normal full time. It's like 45 hours a week. And in the summer, it's probably 30-ish hours a week per person who's working on the farm. And in the winter, the work that we do is kitchen stuff. And it's also, we have a lot of high tunnels also from MDAR grants. Um, and those are growing greens in the winter, unheated. Uh, we also have storage crops that we're holding over the winter and, and cleaning and selling as ordered. Um, and we do a, a few other funky uh, specialty things in the winter, um, like we force radicchio, um, which is a Italian specialty process and item. Um, so that's, that's what people are doing in the winter. People who work here full year round expect that they have like a hybrid position where they'll they'll spend there will be slow months so for the kitchen that'll be like april to june where we we don't actually have any we're in our current model we don't really have a lot of things that we're processing in there because a lot of what we process are, is focused on crops that produce in the summer and early fall early to mid fall so the the winter months are really busy in the kitchen and that's and you know that's when the farm is slower. So there's like slow months for both oh, teams. Watch basically. out! There's a I knew this is gonna happen <laughs> customer eventually. coming down the driveway. But Your next goal for now? Goal for the farm? Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is sort of uh, similar to a question we got a lot after the sale, which is, what do you want to change about the farm as the new owners? And our answer has always been just being the new owners is enough change for us. And what we're really hoping is just to maintain the level that the farm has been at, maintain a consistent revenue, um, and just be able to you know, hone in the things that we already do well as a farm and not try to expand out to anything new at the moment, or you know, we don't really have our eye on any changes. Anyone else have other questions at this moment? We have our tomato trophy. <laughs> <laughs> we, oh my God! Wow, thank you so much. Oh my so we had our state oh tomato God. contest last week <laughs> and they placed third in the heaviest category. <laughs> yeah, we did. Very it was exciting. a variety of tomato that we should note we couldn't pack to most customers because it wouldn't fit on our trays. Yeah, so. we're actually going to stop growing it because it's too big. It. <laughs> but it was good for this competition. Yeah. Um, sorry, remind me what your question is. So was. last year, how were you impacted yeah. by the flooding? And what is this growing season? 
Yeah, great question. Um, so last year we fared pretty well compared to other farms, but we still suffered a significant amount of loss from the rain. We're lucky because we're not on any flood banks, so we didn't have any direct flooding as in overflowing water into our fields, but, we, but what we had was a lot of standing water from excessive rain and poor drainage. And so what we had was a lot of disease problems because of that. And um, our biggest crop that we grow is peppers because of all of the sriracha and salsa that we make and dried peppers. And we sell a lot of fresh peppers and we lost 70% of our pepper insane. crop last insane. year so because was... of disease. Um, because uh, there's a disease called Phytophthora or pepper blight that is endemic in a lot of the soil in this area. Um, in dry years, it can just kind of lay dormant or only infect a few plants. But in wet years, it spreads by leaf wetness. So it will just take over a whole to make a pepper field and it looks like the field was just lit on fire. Like every plant is just brown and dead. So that was a really big loss last year. We could produce a lot less sriracha than we had in the past um, because of that. So that was the big impact for us from the flooding, but we felt really, really lucky compared to other farms, um, how we did. You know, we ended up um, donating produce to other farms that had had a lot of losses so they could fill out their CSA shares, mostly Natural Roots Farm in Conway. They're friends of ours, and yeah. so we were helping them out with their CSA um, last year a bit. But yeah, we feel lucky. This year has been, for us, a really great growing season so far. Really, really hot pretty dry June we like dry if it's dry we can irrigate if it's wet there's nothing we can do so crops have been ready really early this season because of the heat um, and we're we're doing really well this year our peppers are like awesome um, tomatoes have been fairly good yeah generally a good season for us yeah yeah which we're really grateful for in our first growing season so it, I, I think it's hard to show us anything. Yeah, yeah, let's go look yeah. at some stuff. Yeah, for sure. Uh, these, are, really these, are, these are heirloom, right? Yeah, so yeah. these are our, yeah, like high looms, as yeah. I was saying. These are like, they're and not you, true heirlooms, but they they have all the deliciousness and... And, and you use these for, uh, your, do you sell these like this or do you use them for your... We sell these fresh. Yeah. For our salsa and such, we, uh, we grow sauce tomatoes, right. like plum tomato types because those have a lot less water in them. Um, and they, you know, when you're making something like salsa or anything that's pureed tomatoes, um, you want to get as much water out as possible. So these don't work well for that, but these are just like really tasty, good, fresh tomatoes. Um, we grow a lot of sauce tomatoes, San Marzano tomatoes for our value added products. Those are mostly for value added products. And then for our peppers, we have like a whole field that's just for value-added products, and we have a field that's for fresh sales. And if only our peppers were here, we would show them to you because they're yeah, no, what we're proudest the of. Thing. But they're but on generally, a different site. We grow the value-added, the, the fields that are for value-added, we grow like extra, uh, hoping that we'll be able to sell a bunch of that wholesale as well. But just, just, just to make, make sure, just so sometimes we, it's really uh, temperamental with the weather. We'll get rounds that have failures and stuff, so we'll just like put in a lot, a lot of extra, you know, extra rounds of the, of the crops that we go for that. So yeah. people come here to buy these, or where, where are they? Are they, are they we're shipping yeah. yeah. for, for our fresh vegetable yeah, yeah. sale. Yeah. So it's um, it's wholesale, and some customers pick up at the farm. A lot of customers we deliver to. We have a delivery route locally in the Pioneer Valley to as far up as um, Shelburne Falls and our south end is East Hampton. Um, and so we do that twice a week. We deliver to restaurants and grocery stores. Um, and then we also deliver to Boston, a bunch of locations, and then a bunch of distributors come and pick up here and they bring our stuff to New York City and Boston and the Berkshires and lots of other places. And these are um, cayenne peppers. So. Spicy, gonna gonna be in the sriracha. Um, is that your biggest seller, sriracha? Yes, our original sriracha is our is our largest item that we make. And, 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 and in the mix of jardinera. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. 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 I know.
Yeah, that's a, a smaller batch item for us because it's a lot more. Yeah, it's a lot more. Uh, yeah, and it's, it represents it's more a lot of other things that we grow, so we feel like. That yeah. Even, you know. Yeah, this we the peppers get stemmed, then they get ground up, they get put in a 55 gallon drum with uh, salt, water, garlic. What else goes in there? Sugar. 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 Oh, you don't get no water. Don't give us a secret. Okay. And then they sit to ferment in that room over there. It's just uh, an insulated, closed off room um, for a few weeks. And then they get milled so that we get just the flesh and not the skins and seeds. And then we add um, xanthan gum to thicken it. Um, and vinegar to get the right pH. And then Bottles, you know? Yeah, and then it goes in these big, big kettles and it gets pumped into a filler and bottles get filled. And it's all, everything's done here uh, by hand. These same people standing here putting caps on bottles. No. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Jim McGovern's asking me what uh, things we, we that could help us. Yeah. Yeah. I said I have something that's more state level, which is tax exemption applying to vehicles that are um, part of a farm transfer. Like we bought tons of vehicles. They're all used when they were bought by the original owners. So they've had sales tax paid on them many times. And then we bought them. We probably paid like $8,000 altogether in sales tax on all the vehicles we bought as part of this transfer. Wow. And, and because a sales- lot are, A lot of them are pretty yeah. beat up old vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cause the sales tax exemption that applies for all the other things that we do doesn't apply to the vehicles. Okay. Yeah. So that, that would have been- that I've never easy. heard that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, other things that, yeah, I put it in here. Yeah, other things that um, could happen through, okay, yeah. What else we got on here? Oh yeah, um, yeah, reducing the restriction on retailers who can accept HIP, which most people are at this point getting their local vegetables not at farmers markets because the time is limited but at places like river valley co-op like grocery stores that are small that are selling produce you know these place river valley buys a lot of produce from us um and it would be really great if they could accept hip from customers because uh, i think that's that's the best and and most convenient way for most people to be getting local produce mm -hmm. um is at those places i think they begin to expand that nelly yeah, right now it's direct from retailers right, to yeah, get right, a farmer's right, market. Yeah, we, we had to, it was hard when we were doing the Tunnel and Farm Club to even to get. Right, we ended up getting a hip um, was, for us. Yeah. Yeah. Hard. Which was hard. It was hard. Yeah. I remember yes. this. Yeah, it was. Um, also, um, in terms of, you know, the environmental situation, like, adverse weather increasing, just crop insurance and crop disaster relief that is more well suited to small diversified farms like us. It's mostly suited to larger farms that are growing mostly one or two crops. Um, and it has these caps of like, you have to have lost so much of your uh, amount for the year. And we have, you know, 70% loss in our peppers, which is a really big crop for us, but our other crops are okay. You know, there's a, you know, we're try you know, I mean, again, um, let, let me get back to you on, on, on um, kind of where that is. Yeah, I mean, the problem with the house farm bill is it's, it's really written for, you know, farms that, you know, their editors go big or get out. And so, you know, the Senate is doing, is, it, it looks like we're not going to get a farm bill this year. So we'll kick the can down the road and hopefully have more enlightened people in charge next year and write a farm bill that actually can address some of these things. Yeah. Great. Well, you yeah. know, we really appreciate having <coughs> your support. Any, no, and, I, I, you I, know, I'm the, thrilled that you're here and I, I, I feel a sense of pride every time I see your product. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just at Whole Foods in Worcester. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I was, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, um, but it's, you know, and it's, it's amazing that you produce so much and your operation is still pretty modest here yeah yeah we're we're not huge you know compared to 
farms in the middle of the country were really really small um, but we we definitely have a big presence and we we do about um, like 1.8 million in revenue annually about a million in value added and 800,000 in fresh vegetable sales and that's yeah on 65 acres only about 40 of which we farm every year we we keep the rest fallow every year so that we can build up our soil health um, so yeah. we're well, doing a lot <laughs> I'll, I'll look I'll look into the crop insurance stuff and, and maybe we may have I would figure out who at FSA maybe have maybe they have we could arrange a conversation with you and some of the people in Washington about improvements that might be made uh, but in the meantime anything else that comes up just you know how to get a hold of us you know yeah yeah <laughs> great thank you yeah. so much so, i'm gonna leave this information so your predecessors have received like energy grants and value yeah but as far as the uh, cap on fsa so we have a guaranteed business program where we might be able to help you with capital as well so oh, if you want to great. take a look at that, my card's in there. Happy to yeah, that. that's really helpful. So, great, thank you so we much. We just can't compete with FSA, but if they're capped out, then we'll step in and save you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, that's great. Yeah, okay. that's good to know. <laughs> For sure, thank you so yeah. much. Okay, thanks. I appreciate thank you. it. No, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So appreciate it. No. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much.